Well, it's nine o'clock, so uh, we'll begin. Uh, and we're going to do a loving kindness meditation. Uh, the traditional name of which is Metta Bhavana. And Metta is, uh, is pretty much untranslatable, but it, it means um, all sorts of uh, connotations of love. Uh, but it's unconditional love. So it's, um, it's love for everybody and everything without expecting anything back. So our normal love is, uh, is a bit transactional, isn't it? And that's, that's absolutely okay. Uh, we love somebody and we, uh, we like them to love us back. Uh, we have friends and we, we care for them and we expect them to care for us as well. So there's, um, there's a deal going on there, which is fine. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But metta uh, isn't like that. Metta is universal loving kindness. Is the word is the phrase that often describes it. It's it's just unconditional love, unconditional goodwill. It's probably a better translation. Unconditional goodwill to all beings, uh, and so that's that's what we're going to practice this morning. Now it's uh, it's really important to stress that we don't suddenly uh, we can't suddenly turn on a, a switch and uh, this happens uh, as human beings we don't generally feel universal loving kindness uh, we might wish we did but generally we don't and that's because uh, we have this very deep sense of uh, self and that cuts us off from the rest of the world. So we tend to spend quite a lot of time looking after uh, protecting ourselves um, uh, against the world almost. And this is something that we've learned to do uh, since primitive times. We've, uh, when we were lived in caves, we were frightened of um, all the animals that were roaming around. We were frightened of our neighbors who might come and kill us for our food. Um, so we have this deep, deeply inset instinct to uh, protect ourselves. And we don't quite need it in the same way anymore, but we still do it. So we will try to, for instance, uh, we will distrust strangers sometimes. Not always, but often if somebody looks a bit uh, different, we might be a bit scared of them uh, and uh, well my experience is that I do that and think oh look at that person and then they smile at me and say hello uh, and make some kind remark and I'm just feel oh they're just great and why did I think that but we do have this instinct don't we to um, to be a bit suspicious or distrusting sometimes or careful with other people and other people are generally just like us. They have good days, they have bad days. Uh, we all enjoy parts of our life. We all endure suffering in other parts of our life. Sometimes life is hell. Sometimes life is wonderful. And uh, we're all getting older. We're all going to get sick. I mean, we've seen that with this uh, pandemic how it's how it's affected so many people and caused grief and upset to so many people uh, so we're all going to get sick and we're all ultimately we're all going to die so we're all in the same boat uh, so this stranger that we see and these are people that we don't like and uh, uh, and even ourselves uh, we need to look after we need to look after everybody. We need to have a sense of goodwill because we're all doing our best to make our way through what is sometimes uh, a difficult life. Uh, and this meditation helps us do that. So the main thing about it is that we're not trying to suddenly switch on a sense of loving kindness. What we're doing mostly is we're noticing how we feel. So 
uh, that's a completely different thing, isn't it? We, you know, we're noticing how we feel in each of the stages. We're taking a look at ourselves, uh, a friend that we care about, a stranger, somebody we don't really get on with, and uh, and then we're we're seeing how we feel about all these four people. And uh, sometimes we might not feel very good about them. And we're just noticing that. And then we're trying to see the connection between um, what we feel and what's actually happening and how this other person feels. And in our own case, uh, how we make our lives more difficult sometimes by not being kind to ourselves so i'll stop there and uh, we'll do the practice and it's in five stages as i've already indicated uh, ourselves a good friend a stranger somebody we have a bit of a problem with and then we move on to looking at uh, the whole world and all the people in it and all the beings in it Ah, so if you uh, get comfy and you can do this lying on uh, a bed, lying on the floor, sitting on the chair, sitting on a cushion or meditation stool or whatever, whatever makes you comfortable. And um, we'll begin as usual by just settling into the meditation, just arriving, noticing the weight of our bodies pressing down on the chair, stool, bed, floor, and just letting go of the weight. We don't need to hang on to it. You don't need to make any effort at all. Feeling the contact with the bed or the floor. And just noticing that we're being held by the earth. Whatever we're sitting on or lying on whatever contact we have with the floor, the earth is holding us. Bringing our attention to the breath, the in-breath and the out-breath. In breath, expanding our chests, expanding our lungs and our rib cages. The out breath allowing us to relax. The whole body relaxing on each out breath. So as you breathe out, just allowing any tension, any tightness, any cares to drop away. Allowing the mind to relax on each out breath. And the body. So just letting go on each out breath, letting go a bit more on the next and some more on the next. And bringing our attention to the chest area, 
rising and falling. And in particular to the bottom of the rib cage, right in the center of the chest. This is called the sternum. And just behind here, right in the center of our chest, is the heart center, traditionally called chitta, the heart mind. And it's the source of all our positivity and all of our wisdom. And if you really focus on this area behind the sternum, you might be able to feel a warm, pleasant feeling. Particularly as you breathe in. And if you can't, that's okay. But if you can't, just bring to mind somebody that you really love. Someone that you really care about. Or who really cares about you. It could be a person. Or it could be a pet. And just see what happens in this area in the heart center. So if you can feel this sense of warmth in this area, this lovely pleasant feeling, just letting it grow, not making a lot of effort, not thinking about it, just allowing any pleasant sensations to spread throughout the body. If you have any problem with this, don't worry about it. Just staying aware, just noticing this area and being open to the possibility of feeling this. So if you can feel this, lovely warm feeling this is what we're trying to cultivate in for all beings sense of care acceptance loving kindness So we begin with ourselves. And we begin with ourselves because we can't be kind to others unless we begin by being kind to ourselves. So the first thing we have to do is to love ourselves and accept ourselves just as we are. And that's really important. We don't have to be any different to how we are. We're multifaceted human beings 
just like a jewel, were very precious. We live this very precious human life. And like a precious jewel that is being polished, we too are a work in progress. And like a jewel, we are multifaceted. We have lots of sides. And some of them are already beautiful and polished. And some of them need a little bit more work. And that's okay. That's where we're starting from each moment. So can we have a sense of kindness to ourselves in this work? Can we accept ourselves as we are, knowing that we are a work in progress? Can we have a sense of acceptance and goodwill to the parts of us that are not so highly polished? Can we be patient with ourselves? Can we be our own best friend, supporting us, supporting ourselves through the difficult times? Looking after ourselves, caring for ourselves. Even though we may not be where we want to be yet. We may be imperfect, but we're perfectly imperfect. We're perfect just as we are. So wishing ourselves well having a sense of friendship and acceptance for the whole of our being. In the second stage, we're going to bring to mind a very good friend, someone we care about a lot. Just bringing them into the meditation 
as an image or just some sense of them if we can't if we can't mentally see an image just the sense of their presence or their laugh or some good times we had together and it's best not to choose a partner in this um, or uh, a close relative um, because it, that just complicates things so bringing in somebody that we care about who is a good friend and just seeing what happens just seeing what happens in our heart center When we bring this person to mind, we might feel a deep warmth for them. Or sometimes we might not. <laughs> and that's okay as well. But we can just reflect that this friend is just like ourselves. They have good days and bad days. Sometimes they get upset, disappointed. Sometimes they're unhappy. At other times, they enjoy life and they're full of joy and fulfillment. They're just human like us. A work in progress, just doing the best to make the way through life. And with our friends, we see this happening, don't we? We see the, the lives in more detail than we do with other people. And they see our lives. So we have this connection where we, we understand each other. And this creates a sense of friendship and caring between us. We feel a connection with our friends. So wishing our friend well, wishing them every happiness in their lives and freedom from pain. And we're just going to let our good friend go for a moment for the time being and bring to mind a stranger not a complete stranger but somebody we see relatively often but don't really know a neighbor perhaps um, somebody that we uh, we might wait for the bus with somebody we see fairly frequently somebody in a shop or a postie just somebody that uh, is familiar with us but we don't know about their lives
bringing them to mind as an image of them or just the sense of them sitting with us in meditation. And just seeing how we feel, seeing the, what the sensations arise in our body. Whether we feel a connection with them. It may be that we don't feel a connection at all. If we do, then that's great. But it's very likely we don't. In fact, we might feel completely indifferent towards them. And if we do, then that's okay. We're not going to beat ourselves up for feeling indifferent towards them because that's the truth, if that's the way we feel. This is where we begin from. But if we consider this person, perhaps we can make a connection with them. As human beings, we have a tendency to separate ourselves off from people we don't know, that, don't, that we think don't have any impact on our lives. People that are strangers. Yeah, these people are part of the world we live in. And whether we think we are or not, we are connected with all of them. Fellow human beings living their lives and perhaps in many small ways having an impact on our life. So maybe we can see them as people in many ways just like us. The stranger has people they love and people that love them. They are doing their best to be happy in their lives. Sometimes it all goes wrong. Sometimes they're upset. They lose people. They lose dear ones just like we do. They have their hopes dashed in many ways through life just like us. Sometimes they're full of joy and happiness. Sometimes they feel fulfilled and full of love and kindness. There are so many similarities. And this stranger that we don't know, just like us, is getting older. Gets sick and suffers with illness. And just like us, one day, this stranger will die. So their life is very, very precious, just like ours.
So can we wish this stranger well? Can we have a sense of kindness and connection with them? Can we wish them every happiness in their lives? and freedom from pain. In the fourth stage, we're going to bring to mind somebody that we just don't get on with. It may be that we don't like them, are they irritators, or there's just something between us that is awkward and difficult. Probably best not to choose anybody we've had a blazing row with or completely fallen out with. Just somebody who makes us uncomfortable. And first of all, as we bring them to mind as an image or as a sense of them, just noticing how remembering them, thinking about them, makes us feel. Not so much in thought, but in the sensations in our body. What happens when we bring this person to mind? Perhaps we stiffen up a little. We might even get a tightness in our chest. Strange feelings in our abdomen or belly. And of course, thoughts will arise about this person. So just noticing all that with kindness. It's not wrong. It's not bad. It's just what is happening. It's the way things are when we think of this person. So, and it hurts, it's painful when this happens. So the first thing we need to do is to have a sense of care for our own reaction. care and acceptance. When we don't get on with somebody, when they cause us upset of any kind, it causes us a great deal of suffering. It's not nice, it's not pleasant. So can we look after ourselves when this happens? Can we shower ourselves with a sense of loving kindness? Can we soothe, soothe our difficult feelings?
even if those feelings are that we shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be feeling like this. Just being kind to ourselves. And then keeping this person in mind, even though we don't like them very much, even though we find them difficult, can we see that they are a tender, fragile human being, just like ourselves, going through all sorts of pleasant and unpleasant experiences in their lives, just doing the best to be, to live a good life, to be happy and sometimes finding that really hard. So without trying to change how we feel about them in any way, can we have a sense of goodwill towards them? Can we wish them well in their lives? And we wish them happiness and freedom from suffering. And in this final stage, we bring all four people together. Ourselves, our good friend, the stranger, and the person we have difficulty with. Bringing them all together in our imagination. Perhaps imagining them sitting with us. And trying to have a sense of goodwill equally to all four. Just all four of us, tender, fragile human beings, whatever we may seem on the surface, underneath, we're all feeling the same. We're all a bit frightened. We all want to be accepted. We all appreciate kindness. And we're all doing our best to tread this difficult path through life. So opening our hearts to all four people as much as we can. And then spreading this goodwill a little further to all the people that have been meditating with us this morning. 
around about 14, 15 of us. All of us doing our best to live our lives. All of us very similar in the way we feel and in our aspiration to be happy. And spreading this goodwill, this sense of loving kindness even further out to the whole world. To every living being in the world, human and non-human, including animals, water creatures, birds, insects. All these billions of beings, all doing their best to be happy. All living their lives as best they can. Every one of us a work in progress. So can we have a deep sense of well-wishing to all beings? Wishing them happiness, wishing them freedom from pain and suffering. And then finally, letting go of all effort, just sitting with our experience as it is right now. Trying not to think about it, just noticing our direct experience of whatever is happening. In a few moments, I'm going to ring the bell to bring the meditation to an end. And when I do, just being gentle with yourself, taking your time to open your eyes and move your body. There's no hurry.